Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. The ECCB advises citizens of the ECCU countries to be prudent in their financial management. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Thursday, 19th January 2023. Details when we return. Hubbard's Multi Department, Mount Gay, and Hubbard's Tire Bay, located at the Building Supplies Compound in Grand Anse, are reminding the motoring public that another round for licensing and inspection has begun. Just arrived are new shipments of quality furrowed and torque tires to fit all makes and models of vehicles at competitive pricing. Shop early to avoid the hassle of long lines. WhatsApp them on 473 405 5482. Hubbard's quality service, affordable prices. Welcome back. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, the ECCB, encourages citizens and residents of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, ECCU, to engage in prudent financial planning to help them achieve their financial goals and wellness. Andre Huey of SKN Newsline reports. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECCB, encourages citizens and residents of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union to engage in prudent financial planning to help them achieve their financial goals and wellness. In the latest edition of the bank's web show, ECCB Connects, Director of Finance, Chamberlain University at Telem Global Education, Adele Stowe, shares some steps on how individuals can manage their money to achieve financial goals. And so that may require us to, if we're talking in terms of personal planning, reevaluate whether we need to go have another go at our expense plan and be more strict or reinvest in a specific area? Do you want to reevaluate the goals that you had set for the year? Did, were they a little bit lofty? Do you need to recalibrate your entire plan and then re, you know, go through that five-step loop again? Do you need to look within your business and understand other things that may be going very well um, or evaluate the things that may be going well, and you may have to make tough decisions to forego one thing that would have been a like to have in order to drive an investment in something that's more critical and, and get you closer to your goal. So, and so budgeting post setting the budget um, involves a lot of measuring um, and monitoring and evaluating to ensure that you don't just set the budget and walk away. Flexibility. You, correct. You set the budget, you measure against your, what you're actually doing against the activities that you're planning, you're seeing, you're, you want to see if they're going to yield the outcomes that you did plan. If they're not, you probably need to reevaluate how you take actions um, to achieve your budget. If there is an emergency or con um, that happens or an unanticipated event that um, derails you from the broader plan, then you need to reevaluate your overall plan or look within your, your um, current pool of resources to find a way to offset that and to keep you on track. ECCB Connects can be viewed on the Central Bank's YouTube page. I'm Andre Huey for SKN Newsline. Trinidad's Minister of Finance, Calm Imbert, said the government has made some significant strides in the creation of a digital economy with an emphasis on bringing the unbanked into the system. Minister Imberg was speaking during a technical workshop event focused on advancing financial inclusion in the Caribbean on Tuesday. TTT's Kimberly de Souza tells us more. The government is deeply invested in efforts to improve the level of financial inclusion and financial literacy in the country. This is according to Minister of Finance, Colm Imbert, who said the Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago has implemented numerous initiatives to educate the public on making sound financial decisions. These include information about the advantages of using the official financial system, as well as debt management, budgeting, and financial fraud. He also shared other ways the ministry is advancing the digital economy. Our banks have been pursuing ways to afford citizens easier and safer ways to complete transactions without the need to visit, physically visit a branch. 
We also continue our focus on developing the legal framework and adapting existing legislation to promote the cashless agenda. Another key initiative of the financial sector is the pursuit of strategies to increase the uptake of financial services, such as introducing low-tier bank accounts and implementing the reduced New York customer requirements. In collaboration with the central bank, the Ministry of Finance was successful in getting our commercial banks to agree to relax New York customer requirements for small account holders. What was agreed was that we would no longer require two forms of identification, one will do, and other relaxation took place in terms of requirements. Director of Digital Finance for Resilience in ACP at the UN Capital Development Fund, Brian Peters, warned that while promoting inclusive digital economies, we must remember to leave no one behind. Digitization actually uh, is a trend that actually we run the risk that we exacerbate the problem rather than that it's a tool that can help us. So that's a risk. And we need to avoid that we fall into that trap that the gap, let's say the exclusion gap, is increased rather than diminished. Minister Imbert said the government's target over the next few years is to get that unbanked number down below 10%, with a corresponding increase in bank accounts to above 90% in the adult population. Kimberly D'Souza, TTT News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Still on Trinidad, daylight crime drama in Barataria left two dead on Tuesday. The victims are still to be identified, but police officers said the men were suspects in a TTPS sting operation following a spate of robberies in the Barataria district. TTT News has more. A statement from the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service says between 12.30 and 1.30 p.m., police officers attached to the Northeastern Division Intelligence Unit, NED Task Force and Barataria Criminal Investigations Department, or CID, responded to a Facebook ad in which a vehicle was being offered for sale. Acting on information, officers proceeded to 11th Street, Barataria, where two suspects allegedly armed with firearms approached an unmarked police vehicle and pointed the firearms at plainclothes officers. The TTPS says other police officers in another unmarked police vehicle parked nearby announced their presence and the men allegedly pointed the firearms in the direction of those officers. The officers, in response, shot at the two suspects. One of the men was seen running towards the maritime roundabout where he allegedly dropped a firearm onto the roadway. He then ran east onto 10th Street and entered a white Nissan B13 in an attempt to escape. Police officers gave chase after the vehicle and the suspect pointed a firearm in their direction. The officers again shot at the man, wounding him. Both suspects were pronounced dead on arrival at hospital. Meanwhile, the driver of the white Nissan B13, a 38-year-old man of Coconut Drive, Mova, is now assisting detectives with their investigations. According to police, three guns were seized following the sting operation. Over now to Jamaica, where the National Commercial Bank, the NCB Wealth Advisor, arrested last week and formally charged. TVJ News has more. Formal charges have been laid on against the National Commercial Bank Wealth Advisor, who was arrested in St. Anne last week. 35-year-old Kadeen Thomas is facing multiple charges, including forgery, uttering forged documents, simple larceny, as well as breaches of the Cybercrime and Proceeds of Crime Act. It's alleged that between January 2020 and December 2022, she gained access to the accounts of several customers without authorization by submitting fraudulent encashment request forms. Now over 140,000 U.S. dollars was withdrawn. She's represented by attorney at law, Bert Samuels. So the police have done an interview in the presence of her lawyer. The lawyer conducting it was Ms. Journal Smalling. And they have charged her for 143,000 U.S. dollars. And their charges of forgery, uttering forged documents, simple larceny, breaches of the cybercrime, and proceeds of crime act. We maintain, she maintains her innocence. We are in court on Friday of this week, and which we'll be applying for bail for Ms. Thomas. And we will see 
what happens thereafter when we get discovery, that is, what is the evidence against her? We'll certainly have more to say, but for the time being, her plea is that of not guilty. In the meantime, the Andrew Holness government hints at convening Constitution Reform Commission meeting without the opposition as they seek to chart the way forward to becoming a republic. TVJ News has some details. The government is hinting at proceeding with the Constitutional Reform Committee without the opposition. The committee is the first major effort to begin the process of removing the Queen as head of state, among other issues. As Jamila Maitland reports, the first meeting is scheduled this week. Two days before the Constitutional Reform Committee is slated to have its first meeting and the agenda may go ahead without members of the People's National Party. Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who was initially reluctant to proceed without the parliamentary opposition, has seemingly given Legal and Constitutional Affairs Minister Marlene Malahu Ford permission to proceed. We have known this from we started on this journey and we are making sure that we check every box and we move deliberately in that regard. So I'm saying to you, Minister, please move ahead with speed and alacrity on this matter. Jamaica must become a republic. But aside from the process to transition to a republic, other issues such as the charter of fundamental rights and freedom will be discussed. Opposition leader Mark Golding, by way of a letter, outlined some of the concerns. One, that the government specify what areas of the Charters of Rights it would like to amend. And two, that discussions of Jamaica adopting the Caribbean Court of Justice at its final Court of Appeal be part of the committee's objective. TVJ News reached out to Mr. Golding for a response. However, he says he's no closer to receiving an update from the government. But this was Prime Minister Andrew Holness recently on the issues. Those who called for it and now don't want it and now are trying to obfuscate and confuse whatever footworks they may choose to engage in, we are walking a straight line to the objective. The government says the constitution will be amended to reflect today's realities while striking a balance with the core values. But the opposition says it will not support weakening the legislation that could result in less parliamentary oversight in the use of emergency powers. The committee is expected to meet on January 18. According to a letter signed by Minister Malahu Ford, the discussions will be done in phases, the first of which will go for six weeks, ending on March 1. Jamila Maitland, TVJ News. Chief Justice of the Bahamas, Sir Ian Winder, addresses the issue of delayed judgment in his presentation at the opening of the legal year. More in this ZNS News item. Efforts underway to address the issue of delayed judgments, mainly on the civil side of the court. Chief Justice Sir Ian Winder indicated at the recent opening of the legal year that the Court of Appeal has set a standard for judgments to be delivered within three months and no later than six months for complex matters. He noted that, that while judges are trying to comply, challenges remain. He noted that additional judges who are joining the bench should assist with the backlog of civil judgments. I have now instructed civil judges to comply strictly with the practice direction number one of 1998, which was revised and reissued by Sir Burton Hall in 2004 concerning the long vacation. During August and September, no new civil trials will be conducted and judges will hear only part heard and urgent trials and interlocutory applications. This, it is hoped, will provide a writing break to permit judges to catch up on their judgments. It is also hoped that this, the additional judges going into the, into the civil division, four in total, with clearer calendars, will help to bring us all into compliance with the Court of Appeal mandate on outstanding judgments. Hubbard is once again innovating the way you shop with its new online store, providing 24-hour shopping convenience. You can shop now for appliances, hardware, houseware, building material, and more. Free delivery island-wide. Start shopping now at hubbardshardware.gd. Safe, convenient, reliable. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to caribbeanperspective.com for more daily news and more.